Hello world, it's Austin. Let's talk about being transgender and Christian. So this week I thought I'd try something a little bit different, and I asked for questions from you folks uh, on just like on me, on trans stuff, on faith stuff. I just wanted all of your questions. So we're going to do a bit of a Q&A video. So let's get into it. All right, Amy Wishman Nallen on Twitter said, I have a gender creative child age five. I'm really scared of screwing this up. Advice? Relatedly, Emmy Kegler on Twitter wrote, how can we raise kids in a gender non-conforming supportive way? So my number one piece of advice for parents with gender non-conforming and gender creative kids is to educate yourself. And obviously, uh, Amy, you probably already are doing that if you are following me and you know learning more about other trans folks in the world. Um, the number one resource for trans uh, parents of trans kids is Gender Spectrum, and I can put a link to that down below. Gender Spectrum is great. They have a whole bunch of resources for parents um, and for gender creative kids, so definitely educate yourself. Go there. When it comes to raising gender creative kids and generally uh, raising kids in a supportive environment where they can experience their gender and what that means to them in an open and affirming way, um, I think the number one thing to do is to just let kids explore things and to love them no matter what, which is basic parenting 101 anyways. The last thing I'd say, Amy, is that if you're scared of screwing this up, that's okay because all parents are scared of screwing up. That's just the way parenting works, so I'm told. Second question is from Nathan Alderson on Facebook. Nathan says, in an ideal world, do you think you would choose to identify as a trans man without any stigma or would you rather just move past the trans altogether and be accepted as male? And then zooming out a little bit, Emmy Kegler again on Twitter said, would it be better if we didn't have gender at all, or is it an important part of many people's lives and self-understanding? So for me personally, Nathan, I really kind of like being a trans guy and identifying as such, um, because it tells other people a little bit more about my story. Uh, it tells people that maybe I didn't have um, the childhood that everybody would assume that I had if I just said that I was male. So I kind of like it personally. And Emmy, when it comes to gender and, like, is gender even necessary, um, I think it's a huge part of a lot of people's uh, self-understanding and a way that we come to experience our own lives and our own stories. So I don't think, like, I know there are people out there who are just like, let's just get rid of the concept of gender. Um, for me, I don't think that would be helpful or realistic. While I think it would be useful to get rid of gender roles, um, I think our concept of our own gender is something that is so human and so um, wrapped up in who we are that there's just no real getting rid of it. We just have to be careful not to police other people's experience of their gender. Donna Bell on Twitter says, My teen somewhat recently came forward as a transgender male, wants to transition. What steps do we take to get started? Also, our current church is non-affirming and non-welcoming to LGBTQ folks. Should we leave and seek one that is or talk with our current church? All right, Donna Bell, so to the first part of your question, if your trans teen has just come out to you and you're not quite sure where to go, I think the number one thing you should do is listen to your teenager and see what they think their next steps are for transition because everybody's transition is different. Um, your teenager may be interested in looking into hormones or into surgery or maybe they just want to change their name and more of the way that they present themselves. You should take your lead from them. So talk to your teenager, see what they're thinking about, see how they picture their future, and then work with them to create a plan. I really recommend Stephanie Brill's book, The Transgender Child. Um, it's really helpful for parents. It's a book for parents and for healthcare providers, and obviously it's geared more towards younger children. She has a book coming out on transgender teens later this year, which is going to be really great, I'm sure. But um, for The Transgender Child, that is a really great resource for parents um, as they help their teenager or their child figure out what that teenager or child's transition looks like. So I definitely recommend checking that book out. When it comes to your faith community and your church, I think it really depends on the um, how many close people you have in your community that will stand with you if you decide to go maybe to the pastor or to, to whoever is in charge of your church and say, hey, you know, our kid is trans, we would love to stay in this church, but we don't know if this is going to be a safe space. I think the first thing you want to do is bring um, a group of people around you that you feel comfortable with and that you trust in your church um, who can go with you to the pastor or with you to the deacon or whoever to talk about this stuff. So start start like gathering that little group of, of close-knit 
get people together with you before you go to anyone who's in charge, I think that's probably your first step. For a lot of people, it may be easier to just go, okay, we have to find a new church, and that's totally okay. You don't need to feel bad about that. Um, what you need to do is take care of your family and your child. So, yep, do what you gotta do. Megan Ray on Twitter brought up a really difficult one. She said, what are your views on pastors wanting to meet with a trans person to pray that the evil spirit be removed? That is rough. I actually uh, had some family members that wanted me to meet with a pastor for something similar, um, and it's a really difficult thing to face. So I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna give you sort of the PC answer to this question, and then I'm gonna give you my gut reaction answer to this question. The PC answer is that sometimes LGBT folks may find it helpful to seek out spiritual counseling to try to let go of their gender identity or their sexuality. Sometimes that can be helpful for folks, and I definitely don't want to out of hand say that this is a terrible bad thing because some people do find it helpful. So that's the PC answer. My personal view is that any pastor who, or church leader who talks to a trans or any LGBT person and says that this person like has uh, an evil spirit or a demon that needs to be exercised, I think that that pastor is practicing terrible pastoral care. Uh, and I don't think that they should be allowed to be in that position of power because it's just not right. At this point, with what we know about how gender identity is formed and how sexuality is formed, at this point, if we are still trying to exercise demons out of people for things like gender identity and sexuality, we're doing something wrong. So that's just my personal view. Bringing it up a little bit here, uh, I got a question from Little Billy Black on Twitter who says, curious question, since you brought it up in an earlier video, how do you feel about tattoos and other body modifications? This is a great question because it actually speaks to the prohibitions in the Old Testament or Hebrew scriptures about body modification, um, which a lot of people still stick to. Uh, that's where the whole idea that like Christians shouldn't have tattoos comes from, is from these verses in Leviticus that say that you shouldn't um, cut or mark your skin. As most of the verses in Leviticus and Numbers, uh, we have to take the context into account here. So with those verses that say you shouldn't cut or mark your skin, what the uh, text is talking about is um, it's referencing other cultural practices from other religious cults in the Mideast um, where they would cut themselves or or scar themselves or you know tattoo themselves in some ways um, as part of a cult ritual. And so what Israel, uh, the people of Israel, we're trying to do was say we are not part of that cult we are not part of this religious organization we worship the one God of Israel only and so we can't participate in those sort of ritualistic practices now today while some people get tattoos for religious reasons um, I don't think it's the same thing um, that's my personal belief is that tattooing today is not the same as participating in an ancient ritualistic cult <laughs> so <laughs> Like, given that belief that I have, I think tattoos are awesome. I think body art in general is really cool. Um, and the fact that people all over the world have been doing this, that the Maori people in New Zealand have been doing it, Polynesian people have been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years, um, I, like, it's, I just think it's a really cool cultural tradition. So I personally have no problem with it. I have tattoos, obviously. So yeah, I think they're great. All right, really interesting question here from Madison Jade on Facebook. Um, she's asking about what my thoughts are on sexual immorality, which is kind of interesting that she wants to know more about what I see as acceptable and beneficial um, from a Christian viewpoint, from a trans viewpoint, that kind of thing. So Madison, I think this is a really difficult question. Um, for everybody, for all Christians, I think, to kind of figure out. Obviously, there are certain things that we can immediately go, okay, that's not right. Um, for instance, we've got a whole commandment about not committing adultery, so like, obviously, um, cheating on a partner or on a spouse is a really big deal and not okay. The other thing that I think would qualify as sexual immorality um, that we have to be careful of is a sexual relationship between people who have um, a uh, unequal power dynamic. So that can include anything from like teacher and student, uh, adult and person who's underage, like anybody um, uh, that has an unequal power dynamic. I think that falls under the necessary, like, this is not okay to have a sexual relationship <laughs> field. Obviously coming from the LGBT community, identifying as bisexual and um, 
I think like my views on um, sexuality in general when it comes to like people who are gay or lesbian or bisexual or whatever um, I don't think any of that is wrong or sexually immoral obviously <laughs> or I wouldn't uh, you know I'd have to do something more about being bisexual myself um, I don't think that's wrong uh, but yeah, I definitely think there are certain things in the Bible that we have to look at from a Christian point of view and say, this is not an okay sexual relationship. So yeah, those two that I pointed out earlier, definitely those ones. Kevin Garcia on Twitter says, where do you start the conversation on gender identity for someone who has no concept of anything non-binary? I think in the age of the internet, the first thing you can do is just expose people who have no concept that anything exists outside of the gender binary to voices from outside the gender binary. I think it's a great thing that we now have people um, who make videos and people who write blogs and people who write articles on being um, non-binary. Uh, or being uh, trans just in general. Um, the fact that we have those voices out there now is great. And so I think the best thing to do is to find um, resources for these folks to say, hey, look, non-binary people exist or trans folks exist. So like the fact that people exist outside the strict cisgender male, female sort of world, um, we have to bring that to the forefront and say like, well, if these people exist, we have to take them into account in our theology, we have to take them into account in our um, view of what gender is and what sex is. So I think just exposing people to other voices is a great way to start because that then leads to questions like, well, now what do we do? Like, if these people exist, what next? So it's a great sort of like way to open the door. All right, Ben Fails on Twitter says, how do I respond to the assertion by other Christians that the unhappiness with your birth, birth gender is because you're not trusting God enough and if you had more faith, he would make you better. This is an argument that is used by Christians uh, all over the place for literally everything. Uh, <laughs> you've probably seen articles um, from Christians saying that like if you just trusted God more, if you prayed more, if you did the right things, then God would cure your depression or your anxiety or whatever. Um, and that's not the way prayer and faith work. <laughs> I know I've recently seen a couple of really great articles uh, specifically on anxiety and depression and dealing with that um, and facing this kind of question, so I'm going to put those in the link below if I can find them. Uh, look down there. Um, but yeah, I think this is the exact same thing. Like you, your um, faith in God, your trust in God, your belief is not in question here because you deal with any of these things, because you are trans, because you are um, anything. Like that's this does not follow. Um, and I think what we can, where we can go to the Bible on this, um, is with the story where Jesus meets um, the blind man, and Jesus' disciples say, you know, who sinned that this man was made blind? And Jesus said, nobody sinned to make this guy blind. This was not, like, nobody did anything wrong. This was not a lack of faith. This is just the way the world is. Um, so, so yeah, I def definitely point to that, um, section of uh, the Synoptic Gospels. I believe that story is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I believe. Last question. We're almost there. This is from Rhiannon Hall on Twitter. Uh, Rhiannon says, how do you learn to navigate neo-pronouns, um, that being like some newer pronouns, for instance, uh, without offending the requester or feeling ridiculous explaining these pronouns to people who are never heard of them? So um, there are some pronouns out there like we're getting more used to like they as a singular pronoun. Um, we're getting used to Z and here, which are some um, new pronouns. Um, there are some further new ones like Fay, for instance, is being used as a singular pronoun, um, as a gender neutral pronoun. And I know that there are people um, that are uncomfortable with using some of these new pronouns because I, in the beginning, was super uncomfortable using them too. Uh, and it's just like, I think, the base thing you have to go to on pronouns is call and names to call people what they want to be called. Um, like we do this with everybody. We do this with everybody in like famous people, right? Um, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, we call him The Rock and like whatever, <laughs> you know? Um, we don't make a big deal out of it uh, unless we feel that like this person is like trying to get away with something or that they don't they're not really who they are or whatever like we need to trust that people um, want to be called what they say they want to be called and do that and that means doing it even when we might feel a little bit ridiculous doing it even when this is something that we're not familiar with um, calling somebody what they want to be called tells the other person that they are important in the world um, and that they deserve respect, and so that's what we should do, even if we sometimes feel silly. When it comes to explaining it to other people, um, I think 
the thing to do is to be honest and just say like, yeah, this person maybe uses fey pronouns, right? This person uses fey pronouns, um, and I was a little, I felt a little bit weird about it at first, but then I realized how important it is to this person, so, you know, I think we should continue to use the pronouns that they want to use. So I think being open about the fact that, like, maybe you are not fully, like, down with it yet, but that you appreciate this person enough to use the pronouns and name that they want to be called. Um, explaining that to someone else, I think, is is a helpful way to start getting them on board, too. All right, so those were a whole bunch of questions. Thank you so much for all of you that sent in uh, things that you wanted to know about me and about trans stuff and faith stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope that I answered your question. If I didn't answer your question here, um, I'll hopefully answer it in a future Q&A video. So don't you know, don't stop asking. Never stop asking questions. So, uh, hope this was interesting for you all. Let me know your thoughts. Take a look at the links down below, and we will see you back here next Wednesday. Peace.